Hello, my Coffee with Brenna friends. Grab your beverage, grab your Bible. It's time for Coffee with Brenna. This is one of my favorite mugs here at my church, as you, some of you will recognize. It's got the eagle flying on the back, and it has the verse from Isaiah about rising up on wings as eagles. And this is an interesting Bible. I didn't, I didn't remember to bring my own Bible. This is called the Notemaker's Bible. I pulled it off the shelf because it's the only New Living Translation that I saw. And let me just show you. I don't know if they still make these, but at the bottom of every page, <laughs> you can take notes. That's like a great idea for people who read the Bible over and over again. You could write the date and like what comes to mind you know, what you noticed about that passage, and then you would have it <clears throat> for the next time you read that section. And I used to actually do this in in my first Bible. Uh, someone is decorating the bulletin board right there. So if you hear big banging noises, I always have such good timing. Someone's vacuuming, <laughs> someone's having a loud conversation. Hey, I had to be here for something else, and I thought, you know what, I'll just record the video there. So today I'm going to be talking about numbers 13 and 14, something I noticed. Well, goodness, it had to be a while ago because I don't know when I read through the book of Numbers, probably at least six to eight months ago. And you may not know a ton about the book of Numbers. Totally fine. I don't either, <laughs> for being honest here, even though I've read it many times. But one story you might remember from... The book of Numbers is the story of the 12 spies, or scouts, some translations call them scouts, going into the promised land to check it out. Now, this is the first time they went into the promised land. And if you remember the story, it didn't turn out so well, and they wandered for 40 more years in the wilderness. <laughs> and then the next time they sent out two, two spies, two scouts. I don't really know why, but anyway. That's not the point of today. So if you want to open your Bibles to Numbers 13 or 14, I will put a link in the show notes if you want to read it in the New Living. So God allows Moses to send the scouts into the promised land, the spies, the scouts. Twelve men, one from each tribe. The only two you probably remember or even know about are Joshua and Caleb. Now, it's really interesting. I was reading a commentary on this last night as I was getting ready, and it talked about how <laughs> this was sinful in some way. Now I'm going to butcher what he said. But because the people wanted to scout it out, God allowed Moses to send them. Now, I don't know about all that. It is kind of curious that God would send out scouts. And then in chapter 13, it says, see what the land is like. This is Moses talking, not the Lord. And find out whether the people living there are strong or weak, few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? Do their towns have walls or are they unprotected? How is the soil? What are the crops? How many trees? <laughs> it's very interesting, right? Enter the land boldly and bring back samples of the crops you see. The spies go into the land. And what they come back and report is this. I guess I'll put my glasses back on, huh? So they were they they explored the land for 40 days. I don't know if they were told to do it for 40 days or what. But it is a magnificent land. I'm just skipping around a little bit. Flowing with milk and honey. Here's some fruit, but the people living there are powerful and their cities are fortified and large. We even saw the descendants of Anak who are living there. Now, the newer translation of the New Living says, there are giants there. <laughs> we even saw giants there. Like, as if it's not bad enough that the cities are fortified and the people are powerful, we even saw giants there. And then they report where the, where the different groups of people live. But Caleb, we can do this, guys. It's like, he is trying to give them a little pep rally. We can do it. We can go against them. We can win this land, to which the people reply, no way, <laughs> in their own words. We can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are. Then Moses and Aaron get involved in this whole conversation. 
Moses and Aaron fall face down on the ground, which is a posture of submission before God to say, God, I'm really sorry that everyone's acting the way they are. And then Joshua and Caleb chime in with a bunch of stuff like God can do this. And they say in chapter 14, verse nine, don't do not rebel against the Lord and don't be afraid of the people of the land. They are only helpless prey to us. They have no protection, but the Lord is with us. And again, don't be afraid of them. All right. This is where we're, we're landing today, people. This is where we're going. Who are we going to be? <laughs> I was just texting with a friend yesterday about how this is such a challenging season for so many people right now. Who knows why? Maybe, we, maybe I say that every video. <laughs> maybe it's true every video. But when we face obstacles, when we face trials, when things are difficult, what we're really faced with is a choice. Are we going to cower in fear and see perceived obstacles as insurmountable giants that are too strong for us? Or are we going to take the perspective that before our God, they are helpless prey? I mean, the Israelites went so far in the, in the newer translation of the New Living. The land we traveled through and explored will devour anyone who goes to live there. It hadn't even been that long since God had split the Red Sea for them to walk across dry land. And yet this is their conclusion when they see the obstacles in the promised land. Even though God promised them the promised land, that was not enough for them. So today, insurmountable giants or helpless prey, how are you going to choose to look at what you're facing? Now, some obstacles can't be surmounted. Is that a word? I've only ever heard insurmountable. Probably that's a word. Some obstacles literally cannot be overcome. I won't try and give examples, but there are some things that we just have to deal with. God's not going to deliver us from them. But we are still not helpless prey before those challenges. We still have a God who split the Red Sea. We still have a God who, if they had gone into the promised land, would have split a river at flood stage for them and falled, felled, shattered the walls of Jericho. We have a God who delivered eventually over and over and over and over again. But because the other 10 spies, not Joshua and Caleb, the other 10 spies could not trust that God is able in the midst of any perceived obstacles, they didn't get to go. They didn't get to experience his goodness in that way. Now, there's a verse that I love at the end of Ephesians 3. I know I've shared it with you before. And this is what I want us to be thinking about as we wrap this up. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. What? Let's unpack that. Now to him, God, who is able. Yep, God is able. Not only is he able, but he's able to do immeasurably more than all, than anything, than all we ask or imagine. According to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. It's that first part. What if the Israelites, those 10 spies, chose to believe that according to his power that is at work within us and his power that is at work in general, he could do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. The, the difference in this situation is God said he would do it already. <laughs> they didn't have to. They didn't have to imagine. He already said he would. They just had to trust him. So friends, will we trust him to make those obstacles helpless prey before him? Or will, will we continue to view them as insurmountable obstacles? Will we continue to view them as stronger than us? Well, they are sometimes stronger than us, whatever those obstacles are. But they're helpless prey before the Lord right? Let's pray. 
Let's pray about that helpless prey. Ah, 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 Brandon made a joke. <laughs> Jesus, we thank you that to you who are able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine, according to your power that is at work within us, to you be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. God, this isn't about us being glorified. This isn't about us being strong enough. This isn't about us being good enough. It's about your power that is at work in us and in the world. And God, those obstacles that seem insurmountable, those giants that seem stronger than us, change the way we view them so that we instead see them as helpless prey before the God who was able, the God who is able and was able, and the God who gave his life and was raised from the dead so that we could have life. And we pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, my Coffee with Brenna friends. It's always good to be together. I love to hear from you guys. Until next time, thanks for joining me for Coffee with Brenna.